In this lesson, we're going to talk about scatter plots and more specifically partial regression plots um, with the SOTA example. So in simple linear regression, scatter plots was probably one of our go-to visuals to help us understand the response in the regressor. In multiple linear regression, hopefully after this lesson, I will have convinced you that a scatter plot by itself for multiple linear regression isn't the best tool. Okay, so how I'm going to de demonstrate that is first, we're going to look at this hypothetical data set. Okay, so this is a deterministic model and we're, that is going to be exactly linear. So if we took X1 and X2, we plugged it into this model, you're going to get 10. And this data is going to make a straight line. Okay, now what we're going to do is given this data, we're going to plot the response by the regressor. So we have two regressors up here. We're going to have two plots down here. When we do that, we plot x1 um, and our response, we're going to get this fitted line. This fitted line is going to it is represented by this equation. Okay, if we do the same thing for x2 and y, our fitted regression, this red line, is here. But I want you guys to notice something. If we come back up here and we look at this equation, we would expect that the slope for our x's to be negative 5, or at least near negative 5, and then our slope for our x2 to be 12, and our intercept to be roughly 8-ish. So if we come down here, we can see that our slopes definitely don't match. Our intercepts also don't match. So in a multiple linear regression, just plotting the response by the regressor isn't going to provide us with a lot of valuable information like it did in simple linear regression, because the regressors are working together to explain on what's going on in our response. So to combat this issue of x1 and x2 working together to help us understand why, we introduce partial regression or added variable plots. And our goal here is to examine the relationship between the response and one predictor with the effects of all the other predictors taken out. Okay, so we're gonna have our corrected response and our corrected predictor. And so essentially what we're doing and the whole idea of this partial is we want to understand the effect of X1 on the response given that we have adjusted already for the effect of two or vice versa, okay? While these two definitions are important, I think using a picture to help us understand it and working through what we'd expect to see is going to help us understand this part a little bit better. So that's where I'm going to jump to down here. So let's say we have three regressors, x1, x2, x3, and our response. And we want to look at the partial regression plot for x2. Um, what we need first are our, our two values. We need the corrected response residuals for our y-axis and the corrected predictor residual for our x. And how we get that, um, our corrected response, is we're going to find the y i th the i th y residual regressing on all the predictors except x, j. Okay, what that, what I mean by that is we are going to fit a multiple linear regression with y as our response and x1 and x3 as our regressor. We don't have x2 because that's what we're trying to understand. That's the, we're trying to understand how that's gonna be impacted. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna save the residuals associated with this model and denote that as y bar, which means given in statistics, x1, x3, okay? Then, so, if we were to have our plot, our y-axis would have these e, y, 
x1, x3. Or again, we're going to fit a model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 3 x3. And we're going to fit and find the residuals. Fit and find residuals. Okay. What this is telling us, what these residuals are telling us is what is left over in Y that is not explained by X, okay? The second value we need is the corrected predictor um, residuals. So if we come up here, our corrected predictor is going to be the ith xj residual regressing on all the predictor variables except the xj, okay? Let's talk about that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna fit a multiple linear regression with X2 as our response and X1 and X3 as our regressors. And then we're gonna save our residuals associated with this model and denote it by EX2 conditioned on X1, X3. So what that's gonna look like would be this red, EX2 conditioned on X1, X3. What that's gonna look like is we're gonna have X2 is gonna be equal to beta naught plus beta one x1 plus beta three x3. We're gonna fit and find the residuals and plot them. And what this is telling us is what is left over from x2 that's not explained by these two other variables. Okay, so if the information left over in X2 that is not explained by X1 and X3 matches up with the information left over in Y that is not explained by X1 and X3, then we would expect that X2 is important. Okay, so let me kind of reiterate that one more time. So our y-axis or the residuals for the corrected response represents the information, I'm doing in blue, this is what is left over in y that's not explained by x1 or x3, okay? Our x-axis is gonna represent what is left over in x2 that's not explained by x1 and x3. And the whole idea is if these values match up, then we would expect that including X2 is important. One way of kind of thinking about what this plot is going to represent is it's gonna help us understand that partial regression tests that we have looked at in jump or in R. Okay, so Here's something you might see if you do it in jump. Um, and in jump, it's called the effect leverage plot, but we'll show you guys how to do this in jump in a different video. So with our hypothetical data, remember this data right here, if we were to do the partial regression plots, we'll notice that um, given X2 is in the model and has been accounted for, now our regression line for X1 has that slope of negative five, which matches our truth. Same idea over here, given that X1 is in and taken and counted for, then our X2 slope is 12. So that's the idea. Um, for multiple linear regression, our variables are impacting each other. 
and scatter plots by themselves cannot help us really understand what's going on between all of these variables. So per partial regression plots or added variable plots are going to provide us with a visualization to understand the relationship of a variable on the response given the fact that the other variables have been accounted for. Okay, um, there's a couple of other comments that I want to make. If our XJ enters um, the model linearly, then the partial plot should show a linear relationship with a non-zero slope. If there's a curved linear band, this suggests that the higher order terms or the transformations are needed. So if this doesn't look like a straight line, it looks parabolic, you probably need um, maybe a squared term in there. Um, when the XJ is a candidate regressor and there's a horizontal band, the regressor probably has no added value. What I mean by that is if we were to come up here and this line um, is pretty much straight on this blue line right here, it's probably not gonna have a large impact. But if we look at our hypothetical data, that red line or this regressor is pretty far off from just being straight. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to our soda drink example and kind of do the same process that we just did. So again, we have 24 employees where we had um, two regressors of the distance and the number of cases stopped and our response is time, okay? In these two plots, this is just plotting the, respo the response by the regressor. So this is not the partial yet. And if we're looking at our number of cases um, and our time, we probably see a linear fit here and we would maybe expect that. Here, we have distance on the X and time on the Y. And we would probably, I kind of see a slight um, possible quadratic trend. And so then you would probably want to test um, your, for a quadratic term in the presence of X2. And we would notice that there is a significant quadratic term when x1 is ignored. So remember, these two plots up, up here are assuming we're ignoring the other regressor. And we don't want to do that for multiple regression. And so we have partial regression plots. Here is when we have, given that dis we have distance in the model, our k, we're looking at the impact of case. And we can tell that there's a very strong line that's different than just a horizontal blue line. So we would definitely say that cases has an impact. Distance also kind of a little bit further away, but the thing to notice is that when X1 is accounted for, when X1 is accounted for, the presence of this quadratic term kind of no longer exists. And we see that linear fit, a more linear fit. This isn't always the case. Um, but at least this is hopefully help demonstrating the fact that we need to use the partial regression scatter plots rather than just the regular scatter plots. So as a recap, in multiple linear regression, we want to use partial regressions because it's going to provide us with more intuition on how a variable is impacting our response, given that we've taken into account um, the other variables. In our soda drink example, if we didn't take an account of our X1 down here, we would have potentially been thinking that distance has a quadratic trend, but we need to account for the other variables.